what brings you to the Foam Expo? Well, primarily to, to speak. I give a talk to, today about the use of foams in future vehicle applications. Okay. And was it well attended? I thought it was very well attended. I was very surprised to see 50, 60 people come in and, and show such a strong interest in, uh, in foams and modeling and you know, that type of thing. What's your experience of the show? Well, I think it's a great show. It's, it surprised me how big it is and the strong level of interest that everybody has. And it just seems like a wonderful show. In terms of NBH mitigation, what would you say are the key trends, challenges and opportunities at the moment? Well, there are a number of them. Uh, you know, I think to improve fuel mileage, everybody's got their eyes on the cafe regulations that are that are looming out there. Whether they actually happen or not, we'll all have to see, but you still have to prepare for them. And uh, uh, making cars quieter will be a, a huge challenge. Uh, the engines have already been made very quiet, and now we're down to dealing with wind noise and, uh, and road noise, and those are very challenging. If, if they were easy to solve, they would already be solved by now. So those, those provide a major challenge. Electrification provides a major challenge too, because even though mo electric motors are very quiet, the accessories that they, that they uh, bring along, the water pumps, the air pumps, uh, all those things that, that you wouldn't even think, it's, you know, you didn't even notice with your, en your normal car, uh, your ICE engine car, now you have to be dealt with directly. And, uh, you know, it's also very challenging. So, like I said in my talk, the average car has uh, like 100 pounds of sound treatment in it right now. Electric cars still have 100 pounds of sound treatment in them. Okay. What, what new trend do you think we're going to see in the industry in, in this year? I, I don't know. I think things move kind of slowly. I don't know if you can really talk uh, year by year. I think that uh, adding electronics to the car seems to be a continuing trend. And for us, that primarily means, uh, you know, how, how do people react to the car without, uh, with, the, with the background noise? How do they, they speak to the car and have the car understand what they're talking about? I mean, we, we recently did a project with an OEM where we, they wanted to see the effect of active noise control on uh, how well the the, uh, the no hands phone system worked. Where it says dial Tim, and it's supposed to dial Tim. And we actually found that with the active noise control system on, even though the noise levels were reduced, that it the uh, the the hands-free system did not improve. The, the performance of it was decreased. So there's a number of systems that have to be integrated together, and that and that's probably the, the biggest near-term trend we see. And the other one is kind of funny. People are still pretty obsessed about how it sounds when you close the car door. Though we're still, still working on making car doors sound really wonderful when you close them. <laughs> yeah, I find it quite scary that you can't hear cars driving up behind you these days as well. So they're quite stealth, aren't they now? <laughs> uh, at least the electric car, cars are, are quite quiet. We've also done projects with governments to decide how to set standards for uh, making, for quantifying minimum noise for cars. Because very soon they're going to be legislated to have a certain amount of minimum noise under at parking lot speeds.